Oh, it's been a while, and I, I don't know why I don't make more of these. Um, I guess because I get less views, but we still have to go through it. Episode 16 of Review. This video is, I go through all of my old videos. This is episode 16 of this, from the very first review I've ever done to where currently four years ago. That one says two years ago because it's a flare and there was a whole thing. But um, wallpaper available in the description, and I'll have a link to everything in the description is linked that is still relevant or its replacement. So if I just say like, hey, the Fio A5 portable lamp, it'll be listed in the description, but there won't be a link because it's not worth still buying the A5 portable lamp. I'm sure there are other things I will still link to, such as the Hyphen and HE1000. I really did love those. And there's a new version of them out or coming out. And there's been so many clones of the shape. There was the drop version. There is the um, the Aria. Is Aria right? What's the other one? There's there's Ananda. They're all the same. Like if you squinted really hard, you can't tell them apart. But they all sort of embody that giant planar shape, and that's a good thing. Giant planars are good things. It's just it was very hard at the four years ago to tell like that apart from the lesser one. There were slight differences, but not like in the cost. And those are like two grand and it wasn't there so like i will write he1000s in the description and then i'm going to link something else uh, because that's still worth looking at the dbx go rack god i wish i could link this in the description i actually still have like two of these and i don't use them anymore because i if i put them in a video you're going to see them and go can i buy that zeos and i'm going to go no because this was a sort of like a revolution because it has XLR inputs and outputs, and it was just a volume control you could add between a balance source and, and output. So like powered monitors, like these powered monitors. Um, I have a volume control on the Motu M2, but if you had just a straight up balanced DAC and you had powered monitors, you needed some sort of volume control, and the DVX Go Rack was perfect. However, the DVX Go Rack was also, had balance for the left and right, and it did this thing. And I don't remember the exact title of the button, but I talk about it in this video for like fucking ever. Where it would actually, it was like a bass boost, but like in the sort of level of like IFI Zendak bass boost. Where it didn't just make, oh, the low end greater. It actually did some weird shit where it took an octave above. Like, okay, you've got sound and you've got the stuff that's supposed to be deep bass. Then there's the stuff that's just supposed to be bass. Not like deep bass. It took that stuff that's just supposed to be bass, literally picked it up, made a copy of it, moved it over and included it in the sub bass. So every sound you heard was like thick bass. So you could do that with powered monitors with the push of a button. It also had compression and other things. And I think I got them, how much did I pay for them? Like under a hundred dollars. They were under a hundred dollars. And then at some point they jumped sky the fuck high like three or four hundred dollars because they were out of stock. They stopped making it. And I think I hoarded two or three of them and then I sold them in yard sales. And I think I have two left, which means I got to take out a go rack because there's no purity in adding a crazy wild bass boost. But at some point you just got to say, eh, maybe I just want to have some fun. And it was nice to be able to adjust the, the, the levels of each. And it's a beautiful digital jog shuttle knob. God damn it. There's a wire attached to this head. This GoPro is the one I use for live streaming. So this is like, I feel like I have a weird... What's that thing called when you have your hair cornrows and just hanging down? Um, okay, the Audio God uh, NFB11 imported Hi Fi Glory. This is not the R2R. I still own the Audio God R2R. This was a loner. We actually have to talk about Audio God or Audio GD for a bit because they've, I think they've fallen out of favor. I think they were like the first Chinese Hi Fi that anyone actually paid attention to. And they like over-engineered the shit out of their stuff. There was so much packed into it. And they have this weird ordering system where like you have to be validated by them. It, it was not like a consumer friendly brand, which is kind of like the mystique, like, oh my God, you have an audio God product. You must have spent, you know, days trying to figure out how to fucking order it. And there's no customer service and you gotta go through weird emails. And like they made good stuff, but I think nowadays it's just it's overshadowed by Literally every topping and every LoxG product and all that Chinese stuff is just available. You know, you get on Amazon, you get on APOS, you just get anywhere you want. So 
We'll come back to AudioGo when I get to the R2R. I'll talk more about the actual sound quality because I still have the R2R and I just refuse to hook it up. It just sits in the shelf and I go, I kind of want to, maybe, nah, I got other amps. Um, the Emotiva Stealth DC1 Feet Go Rack. Shit, I didn't start a timer. Oh, I have a clock on the wall now. I don't know how long ago my last one was, but we started this, what, like four minutes ago? So we'll take this 25 minutes. We'll take this to the 15. We'll take it to three. But that clock ticks. So if you hear, I'll have the window open so you'll hear birds. So we'll take this. I'll look at the clock. Um, Emotiva stopped making DAX, just like straight DAX. They used to have the big ego, the little ego, the stealth DC1. I have the XDA2. I think it's the XDA2. It was like the big rack mount DAC. And it was like, it was great. They were just good, great DAX, great, good enough DAX. This doesn't have a headphone out, but it was weird because it was two ones. And they just stopped making them. And I don't know why. I guess they try to consolidate. Everyone just buys a, a pre-pro or preamp with has a DAC built in. I don't know. I liked their stuff. It was a little bit pricey. Like, I don't feel like they gave you enough options. Like most like modern DACs, like a topping, where is it? Boom, there's a D70S that has Bluetooth built in, that has remote control, that has you know X, all the inputs that you get in a high-end DAC. And the Emotiva never had a high-end DAC if you count those certain things. They would include a headphone out, which is like, that's not the point of a DAC. But they would, so if they restructured and did it again, they could probably do it right. But they just didn't back four years ago. Um, well, here's a big one, a big one. The Oppo Ha One, huge DAC amp combo of Destiny. Wow, that was a terrible title, Zeus. You're the worst. Um, this was, you remember the Oppo Ha Two? It was a little portable. What do I have the Oppo Ha Two here? I feel like the Oppo Ha Two exists in my space. Yes, it does. I knew I took it out because I was like, I need to charge this and use it. So here's the Oppo Ha Two. And this leather bound, because the original ones were leather bound, um, just aluminum box, and let's check the battery. And it's got four stars, and you go, and it clicks. And it's, oh God, gorgeous. Just gorgeous piece of engineering, and like it's, it's outclassed by like 19 different things you could buy right now. But this felt special. This was the right size. It was, it was like... And I don't want to compare to iPhones because I don't like iPhones, but there was always like that. I know my friend is obsessed with like older iPhones, like iPhone 5 or 6. But like that was a perfect size and they, made, they haven't made a good one since now and now they're making a small one. Like this just feels like what a quality, like when you get the the I, um, the IFI like uh, signature IDSDs and they're this thick, whatever happened to this? Like this exact, because they make feel ones that are like that big. But the, 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 I don't know, there was something about this. And this is the Ha 2, that is the Ha 1. So take what I feel about this, make that big screen, VUs, fucking all the data, like it was, it was a headphone amp DAC combo, it got hot, it was beautiful. It's completely outdated now. There are many things that are better than it. As far as power, as far as the, way, the, the actual specs on the DAC, but you know, nothing has that screen. Nothing has the interactivity, the remote control, which was, it doesn't look like a very good remote control. I don't remember it hundred percent. I'll kick this thing. I'm wearing shorts today. It's, it's nice enough that the shorts are out and the barbecue's open and I clean my car. Oh, and um, spoiler alerts, cause this will come out soon. Um, I got a thousand dollar Bluetooth speaker, a portable blue, like a just giant size of this monitor uh, that is currently in my garage playing the sounds of owls because I'm trying to keep the birds from living in my garage. And that's just saying the sound box is what the speaker is. So yeah, the Oppo Ha 1 and the Oppo Ha 2, they're like museum pieces. They're like, oh, this will never come again. Like, I don't think anyone's built an Oppo Ha 1 part two anywhere else with the, with the big screen and the interactivity. Like there are nice, the, the um the, the Matrix Mini I is a better DAC amp combo than the Oppo Hot One is, at least to my ears and my memory, and it's got a beautiful screen, but it doesn't do anything. It they didn't go far enough, and that that went far enough. That was an impressive piece of kit. Um, so the ZMF Ori and Blackwood, my first ZMFs, 
And these were, I believe, still based, yeah, you can see by the headbands, these are still based on the T50, or the Fostex headphone. Well, they had at least a headband, these might be the Mark III, Mark IIs, not even Mark Threes. Um, and he, ZMF made the custom cups, and he took the driver, and he tuned the driver. I believe these were both still tuned off the original T50 driver. And they were expensive, because he did a lot more work than, like, say, Modhouse does to do the Argons. But Argon will kick the shit out of both of those right now. The Ori and the Blackwoods were just super fucking unique in their build and their, their quality. Like, he added so much to them to make them quality. that he built a comp. ZMF was birthed from things like that. And I was like, oh my God, like I felt special holding them. They were just, but the pads were like stretched over the wood. There was no like, now it's much more refined and these got more tuning and their own drivers instead of like using Fostex parts. But those were the Alpha and the Omega or the Ori and the Blackwood. And they were good enough to start a company. I don't think I'd recommend them now. Like I don't, I never had an urge to own them after these many, four years. I can't believe all this shit is just four years old. I feel like that was a decade ago, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing in terms of like, because you live as long as your brain can stretch time. Like if you know how a day feels like it takes forever, that's good, because you only have so many days before you're dead. This is getting real dark, but it's like, I, I that feels like eons ago, me touching the first ZMS, and I've met him several times, and I was supposed to go to um <coughs> the audio show in Chicago where they are. Uh, I keep thinking Adorama, it's not what it is. But yeah, no, it's four years ago, we've moved on from that. Now we've got real ZMF headphones are in the basement. Oh, the Sennheiser HD 800S. So I must have done the 800 already, previously in one of these re reviews. The 800S called The Reckoning, and y you know what's weird? Oh, they still have the ha huh, one there. I don't remember what I said about the 800S. As much as I have an opinion now that I could recall, like, oh, I, 800S was, was good enough. Um, 800s I hated, 800S was like a much better version, moving on. I don't think I said anything different than that in this video four years ago. Uh, I'm not running them on a tube in this video. So, I mean, that's a good sign because usually you have to fucking fix HG800, HG800S, and I'm not fixing them so I, I, I honestly, now that the 8XX is like a thing, and it's like, all right, we took the 800S and we retuned it again via, via drop, I kinda care, and I might rewatch that video, but I also have my friend's 800, have his HD800s that are SDR modded, which the SDR mod was supposed to be what happened to the 800S, but those are way too warm to be what the 800S are. So basically, I just, uh, I wish they were more comfortable. Like everyone's like, oh my God, they're so comfortable. I feel like they're too big and they're weirdly built for the, the flagship headphone of Sennheiser. It's always gonna be the thing. They're never gonna they're never gonna feel as special or even half as special as like Mezzi and Pyrian. Mezzi and Pyrian are fucking special. Even the Dianas, the, uh, the Abyss Dianas feel special. And HG800s always just felt like plastic stuff. I don't know, it's just, it's a brain, it's a mental, like block um that was a sound demo bear dynamic t1 so this has to be the first t1 because it's got the attached cable and i don't i don't remember like i honestly i remember the t5ps i loved i think the t1's got a pass but there was still that first gen tesla driver and nobody in their right ear not right mind, right ear, was just in love with first gen Tesla drivers. They were just brutal. But I remember the, I remember giving it some praise. I was like, all right, this is a quality, it's a quality product. They've tried, maybe not my perfect sound, but okay. And I think the newer bears, I haven't heard the newest revision of like the T5P or the T1. And apparently they've, they've gone real warm. Like they've gone like completely opposite of what those original ones were. So I'm looking, for, I'd look forward to it four years ago. No one's offered me Bear Dynamics. I know Bear Dynamics usually like contacts every reviewer and I just sort of like don't respond to half of those. But uh, I, they haven't asked me recently. And I also, 
I'd complain a lot and I don't want to deal with the email back and forth with it. So maybe I'll just find someone to loan me a new pair of the bears and I'll give them a go. So the Fostex THX hundred purple hearts. Now I think there were three wood varieties. There was Ebony's purple hearts and the, the original wood. I don't remember the original wood name for the X hundreds. Cause I think they didn't name the original ones until they had multiple woods and they had to go and rename it. Kind of like Star Wars was called Star Wars until now it's called Star Wars A New Hope. Is that what, the, did they change it to A New Hope? I think, cause it was just Star Wars. You didn't need, there was only one movie. So there was only one Fostex X100 and there was just, here you go. And oh shit, we made two more. We gotta go back and rename that one. The THX 100 Purple Hearts were my favorite of the group. They said all they changed was the wood I don't know if I believe them because the differences in sound between the three I heard was either a quality control thing, which I'm dealing with quality control things, or just the actual wood actually mattered that much. But the, the Purple Hearts were like the most luxurious, most bass, but the like it was softer bass and the other ones were like aggressive. So the only thing that the X100 Purple Hearts were missing versus the TH900s was the soundstage. Soundstage and just overall driver quality. So, I mean, you didn't get X100 Purple Hearts and go, oh, I don't need X, don't need TH100s now. You got them because those were like the halfway point between nothing, then those, then TH900s. So, I mean, you could kind of fool people maybe into thinking that, oh, that's TH100s. Also, that's all the attached cables. That's way old. They've all got detachable cables now. Um, the Bravo Audio SP1 Tube Pre Speaker Amp. You know what? I remember using this for a very short period of time. What, what, what speakers are there? Those are JBL Studios. Those look like some sort of JBL Studio speaker, but not Studio like 530s. 100? Studio 100s? 200s? I don't know. And... It's basically a solid state speaker amplifier with a tube pre-attached. So you can just get a, a shit man, a shit valley at this point and has the pre-outs and just go plug it into any good solid speaker amp and be done with it. So, but that was a, a Bravo Audio. Bravo Audio always made like the little two, like the little ocean ones. And it was a big open box with just clear and it looked cool. Looked cool, functioned. I, I remember something about the front has a three and a half millimeter that had to be used, or if you used it, it buzzed. I forget, I forget the actual intricacies of it. I think it was under $100. I think it was under, under $200. Eh, you don't see anything like that anymore, which is kind of sad. Like, I, like four years ago is not that long ago. Like, I, it just happened, and then like, okay, here's a thing. Oh, did we not sell a million of them? I just never, never designed anything like that again. I'll even sell it. I'm sure if I look, Knob Sound sells something, but I think I would have seen it. I like tubes. I like tubes and speakers. And it's very hard to power speakers with tubes. I got that set of Toxeritas amps in the basement that are like $2,500 a pair. And those are legit eight watt a channel tube amps. So having a hybrid would be like a nice change of pace. I would love for, who, who would I like to bring it out? I guess SMSL has the Infineon. You know what they need to do? They need to do an Infineon speaker amp. Like that, that's a chipset, the German Infineon drivers, and have a tube that's selectable. So you can either have it just be straight, solid state speaker amp, or flip a switch, tube warms up, then feeds the warm tube sound as a preamp into this, the clean as shit German things and then work. I'd buy that. I would love to have that because then you can have an option. Everyone wants options. Because if you just have a tube speaker amp, then that's it. You know, these fucking insanely accurate monitors will never be accurate because you're only feeding them. Well, they wouldn't get fed because they're self-powered. But you get the point. Sometimes you want to have the ability to be like, my speaker pure, my speaker fucked up. And I love the way it sounds fucked up. Like that. Speaking of the devil, as we mentioned in this. In fact, it's even the right uh, color. So that is the birth of the IFI IDAC 2 which was a, that was a weird motherfucker because it was the first in that big chassis, volume knob, headphone out, RCAs on the fascia. Like I, IFI was just like, 
full of mad lads. They still are full of mad lads, but that was like extra mad laddie because it was designed as a purely as a DAC you would take with you, plug it in USB, power it off your laptop, or run it off its own internal battery, but has a laptop, and you have RCA outs. And it just happened to have a headphone jack. The headphone wasn't the original intended purpose of it. In fact, I think even the um, the RCAs may have been adjustable with the knob. Although I, I can't verify that in my brain right now. So yeah, that was IFI's first attempt to like a portable thing. So it was just a fucking DAC. And I'm like, well, why are you bringing a, a DAC somewhere? Unless you're going to someone's house and they have their amps and their speakers and you want to show up with your DAC. Yes, and they still, it's still, I'm still confused because it's called an IDAC 2. So where's the IDAC 1? And now it's not the IDSD because it didn't do DSD. Oh my fucking God, moving on. Oh Jesus, did I just hit the stacks? We just broke the stacks, Hyman. Z reviews stacks L300. No, 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 I did the stacks before. L300 is the, I've definitely done stacks before. What am I, insane? L300, you can hear God with these. Um, I probably take that back now. I think they were the, of all the stacks I've heard, the L300s are the most boring. But that being said, that's like saying of all the Formula One cars I've driven, you know, this uh, Honda one is the most boring. It's still a fucking Formula One car. You know, we're not comparing it against the 90s Camaro. Like, it's, 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 it's in its own league of things, and it's the, the most boring of its own league. Uh, I would, like, if you say I want to get into stacks, I don't recommend L300s. I barely recommend L500s. You just got to go all in or not. And this was back when you can get the cheap Energizer, which you fucking can't anymore. So at least that was like a $300 unit that allowed you, like, okay, $300 is not bad. You can buy, you know, tax, amps, get the $300 thing. Now you have the ability to use stacks or electrostatics. Now... That is an impossible combo. That's a $700 combo. These were only like $350, $400. And that was $250 to $350. So it was, it was, it was a, an affordable like thing. You could actually get into it. But now that doesn't exist. Now the cheapest Stax Energizer is legitimately the portable one. And it's $900. So you got to go buy used. You can't even buy like, a, like an actual affordable one. And so if you're going to spend... $900 on a fucking Energizer or several hundred dollars on a used one, I'm not going to recommend you get the lowest end stacks because it ain't fucking worth it. If you wanted all the stacks, you wanted the 300s, the 500s, the 700s, <clears throat> the 300 limiteds, we'll get to the 300 limiteds, which are basically the L700s and more soundstage, and I kind of love those the most. But yeah, no, no. L300s, you'd have to have such, you'd already have to own an energizer, a way to power it, and then you just have to want to know what linear is like. I don't know why, but when I do these, my nose itches real bad. Like, my nose doesn't itch when I'm just sitting here watching YouTube videos, but now it's like, fuck, rip my face off. Um, so yeah, no, yeah, no, and yeah, and no. Bose Quiet Comfort 35. Um, I liked those. I know, it's fucked up, but they did exactly what I expected them to do. Um, and they weren't horrible. Like but like Beats, like old Beats were horrible. You put them on and you were just offended by this. You call this fucking sound, you s fucking assholes. You fucking, this is, this is the worst shit ever. Throw it in the trash. The bows were well built. Amazing noise canceling. Comfortable. Super comfortable, in fact. And the sound was inoffensive. It's not a great praise of the sound, but inoffensive is really all that I need to, to come over the line of like, well, I don't like this. I won't recommend it. Okay. Does everything else add up to a recommendation? Yeah, it does. They're, they're, they're fucking super comfortable getting on a plane back when we can get on planes. It, it was a big deal. Noise canceling was phenomenal, was the best in the business. Bose still, I think, has the best noise canceling. Uh, maybe, maybe the, uh, the new AirPods Max beat them versus the L700s. But... Back in the day, that was good enough. I actually gave it my blessing. Like, it's not, you're not gonna have any fun, but for just shut the fuck up and let me listen to something that's not a baby crying, perfect. Uh, Emu Purple Hearts, back to Purple Heart. So, 
Those are the creative of our lives just wrapped in wood, right? There's wood and they're the attached cable and the shittiest fucking headband. And I didn't like them. I love the actual cheap creative of our lives. You listen to them and they're like, oh my God, yeah, this is fucking quality. This biocellulose driver is amazing. And, but they're too shitty to like, like even uh, KPH30Is, the other 20 bucks sound amazing and are built sort of shitty, but they don't feel like they're gonna break at every moment. Those and the original uh, creative of Unalive just feel like they're gonna break all the time. As soon as you touch them, they're gonna break. And those didn't sound as good as the creative of Unalive. In fact, it took me like another two years just to get the cows. I got the cows and the cow twos, I just bought them. And I didn't know at that point when I did that that it was the cow. I just judged it on its own, which is how every review should be. It should just be judge it on its own. And I judged it as like, oh, I don't think so. No, I'm not, I'm not buying it. I wasn't buying into those. That was like the one mass drop exclusive headphone that I just, and it should have worked because cows are great, but they did a purple heart backing and they didn't fix it and the, and the pads are bad. And yet, no, we skip over those. We skip over that sound demo, sound demo, sound demo. My God, the sound demos. Good wallpapers, though. That's a good wallpaper. Ooh, I reviewed my Omni mount, uh, Play 25X. And if we look on the floor back there, there's the Omni mount, Play 25X. Um, I actually own two of those. That's the one that holds up my review monitor, which is in my basement. If we go, if you watch any other video besides this one, uh, sound demo or something, my vertical NEC, which is a 21 by 9. 1080p, 1080p, 21 by nine, that's vertically flipped. That's the monitor arm that it's using. Um, I bought a second one, which is that one, which is probably not this one, to hold literally this 40 inch Samsung 4K up. Right now it's on its normal stand and I have it on the stand for two reasons. One, I'm lazy and number two, I don't know if I wanna mount a permanent thing to my wall because now I own a house like when I was renting for some reason I had no problem drilling holes in the wall they ended up keeping like six or seven hundred dollars of my deposit out of the two apartments so it was like seven eight hundred dollars worth of deposit they ended up keeping like six or seven of that to do the floors and everything and I'm like you know what worth it take my deposit take all of it you know why because I just drilled shit into the walls and I mounted boards and it was like yes yeah, the next tenant will probably love this stuff and even if they didn't see it it was worth it but now the only way to get that to work, because it isn't a desk clamp, and I couldn't clamp it onto a plastic table anyway, was to actually was to actually fucking mount that into the wall. And I will do it eventually, because I believe this place is going to stay my office. And frankly, I would love the ability to like just lift the monitor up and and actually get space. The one of the biggest advantages of having like a monitor arm like that is if you just have a monitor, even if this monitor was in the exact same spot, I didn't need it to move around to do anything at all, I would be able to put the Moto M2 instead of like fucking janking it over this monitor arm or monitor stand, just have space. It was so nice to have just a floating, it was a floating screen with everything was underneath it. So just for that reason, I kind of want to put it back in order. I just have to make sure this is exactly the way I want to orient the office before I commit to it. I have commitment issues. Um, I would probably do like a weird corner bracket onto the wall. That's how I would handle it. I would get my woodworking skills out. I would build basically a 12 inch high, five inch wide L bracket, like out of a nice piece of like oak or something, sand it, route it, mount it to the wall, and then drill through that and then get into the fucking thing. So it doesn't look like it's just stuck in there. So yeah, I love the play, the Omni mount play 25X. It wasn't cheap, but it, it's supposed to hold 25 inch screen and, and modern 40 inch 4Ks, which by the way, you can't find 40 inch 4Ks and it's sort of making me want to buy one on uh, eBay, sort of. Because 43 is as small as it goes. And frankly, 43 is just a little bit too big for like a desk, 40 is perfect. But I gotta check, I may have ordered one on, on eBay and I haven't seen it. Uh, anyway, oh no, the place had a really bad review so I didn't order it. Someone bring back a 40 inch 4K for computer use. Bring me 120 hertz, because this is only 60. But yeah, I don't know how we got off on that weird tangent. We're almost done with our time. We'll end on these two. So, shit full of two. Shit full of one was just a little stick. It looked like a USB stick. And you plugged it in, it had sharp edges and got really hot. And it was like, that's, that's cute, shit. They were like the first one to come out. Well, not even the first one. In fact, that had the little volume knob. 
It was adorable. It was adorable and it was all right. The shit full of two is when things got serious, the shitty sequel. Cause then it had a quarter inch out and th a th line in. They actually made like a DAC amp with the volume knob on top. It was, I actually gave it to my friend who currently still has it. And I'm like, I don't know, you keep using it if you want. It was, the, it was like the second DAC amp combo that shit ever put out. Cause they don't do combos, they do stacks. So a fuller was a combo and that's a combo. Now the hell is a combo and the, the full of, sh full of three is out, which blows away the two as far as like build and build and sound quality and power all of a few USB. It was great. So would I recommend that? No. Would I recommend the sh shit full of three? Sort of. The only reason I say sort of is because, uh, the, the IFI Zendak exists and now the, uh, it's not up here. It's downstairs. The immaculate uh, tone 2, the Cadiz Tone Board 2 exists. And finally, on this one, is uh, Daps the Movie. One hour, 53 minutes, 47 seconds. Back when I didn't do daily videos, because keep in mind, we're not on daily videos yet. This is every three days I would release one. It just says four years ago, but I'm, I had to switch to daily videos in 2018, at the end of 2018, because YouTube's algorithm is a pile of dog shit. And it was like, haha, your views went down because you don't put out enough content or consistency or whatever the fuck it was. And the only fix I could figure out was due to daily videos. So I've been doing daily videos for over two years. That's, that's not easy. But before I did daily videos, I could spend time and do gatherings and do a collection of things like daps, digital audio players. I had a Fio, I have a Koan, I have a Hi-Fi-Min. All, uh, yeah, all of these five, and I sat down and I went through each one of them and I time stamped when it was, and it was two hours long. Now I wouldn't do that. Now that's five days worth of content, so I would just break it apart into individual episodes. I'd like to, in the future of Z reviews, not have to put a video out every day. Holy shit, what a fucking thing. I, I'm trying to work on hi-fi guides, the forum. I'm going to put some ads on the side of that, try to make it so that I can still afford to live in this house and put out a video, get ready for this, every other day. Mind blown. I know, imagine, imagine having three YouTube channels with your name on it. The cooking channel is basically, it's not abandoned, but it's like, I don't fucking focus on it. We got our own little group in the, in the telegram. We have a, a private telegram for just patrons. They're the best people on earth. Stay out of it. In fact, don't even, don't even think about that. But then the unboxing channel, the princess pasta is taking care of it. She does all the links. She watches them all. I just make content because I use unboxings constantly. I'm like, I'm not going to throw away unboxing videos. People love unboxings. So I got daily videos on an unboxing channel which are not organized or in any sort of order. They're just random as I take them off the camera. And then I've got my main channel, which is daily videos. I would love if my main channel, at least my main channel, just went every other day. Because think about it, instead of needing 30 videos this month, I only need 15. Oh, oh I could have hobbies. I could do, I could do ground ups again, because I'm not concerned about all, oh, because that would be five, five videos would be 10 days. That's too much for daps. One day, not enough for daps. Five days, eh, you spread them out across the month, it's fine. But 10 days worth of daps, that's too much. It is too much. So at some point, I don't, you know what? I'm not even talking about the video itself. I have no idea. We, I should, can I re-premiere this? I would love if I could just premiere my four-year-old daps the movie video with live stream content, like comments, and we could all just comment on it. It'd be fantastic. I guess I could just start a YouTube live stream and just play it and interact with everybody. I'd be like, hey guys, what's up? We're just, we're just gonna watch my old video and have a comment. It'd be interesting. Anyway, th this was review 16. Um, I think the BioBidet BB2000 is a great way to start uh, review 17, um, the ass wipening. And as always, links to Patreon and Subscribestar. See reviews early. This video doesn't count as one of those, but see reviews early. Uh, participate in the yard sale, first to 10th of every month. I ship for free continent to the United States, one third shipping international. Although prices are going down, so that might go back to 50% shipping. I'll have to see what UPS says. Uh, if you'd like to ask me any questions or directly interact with me, the $10 uh, behind the scenes private telegram chat 
is filled with wonderful people who are willing to help you and you can just at Zeospantera me and not DM me because I don't need 300 people DMing me, but just at Zeospantera in the $10 Telegram chat and I will see your thing and I'll be like, you know, that's stupid. And then I'm, that's it, I've answered your question. So to find all the patrons, see reviews early, yard sales, $10 patrons, find a uh, see reviews early, participate in yard sales and get to the private behind the scenes Telegram chat on either subscribe star or Patreon. Wallpapers as always in the description. So feel free to use that crop it, use it as your wallpaper. Want to find the original artist? Um, IQDB or Sauce Now might find it. A lot of these are edited for screen size, so you may have to crop to do that. But yeah, that, 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 and I will see you tomorrow for a regular boring old review.